Hello, I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to Share Views, brought to you by the financial website London South East. Our guest today is Colin Hutchinson, Chief Executive of Ascent Resources, the aim listed operator of the Petrovsky gas field in Slovenia, and he's here to update us on permitting and the strategic review. Greetings, Colin. Hi, Donald. So, uh, busy times as ever. Yes, it's never a dull moment, really. Never a dull moment, indeed. It's very nice to have you in the studio again. Uh, Ascent are holding a general meeting on the morning of the 20th of November so that shareholders can vote to allow you to raise money to take the business forward. That's a, 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 fair, assumption, a fair summary of what's going on, yes? Yes, we're, what we're asking shareholders to vote on is the resolution which didn't get the 75% uh, majority that it needed to get uh, at the general meeting in June. So it's an authority to allow the directors to raise up to 340 or to issue up to 340 million shares should they need to do so in the future and I think it's important for com that for us to have that authority for a number of different reasons. Okay I'm sure it is. Now we've been here before as you said uh, you asked shareholders in June to allow you to raise money uh, perhaps they didn't appreciate that funding was such a strategic necessity shall we say. Presumably it's your hope that they see the importance of getting yes to raising funds now. Yes I think in June shareholders realised we production coming in, we'd cash in the bank and maybe the directors didn't need to be raising money. But I think having the ability to do it is important in the strategic review process. Um, we're talking, still talking to people during that process. Um, but without the ability to walk away, we're in a much weaker position. So we can't say to people, OK, thanks, but we're going to continue independently. Having the authority to raise money gives us that option. Yes. It's also, no, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, so, I think. So, how much money would you hope to raise, and what would you spend that money on? Well, there's no immediate plans to, to to raise the money. It's about giving us the authority to do that. Should we need to do so in the future? It's 340 million shares. It's the maximum we could issue for cash under the the second resolution that we're asking shareholders to vote on. So that's that's the maximum. Um, and how much in cash is terms is that? Well, 340 million shares at the current share price is around one and a half million pounds. So. Okay. And what would it, that sits in the bank that that or that authority uh, to spend is simply for negotiating purposes with your st strategic review partners? Well, well, I think it helps with the strategic review. It also helps with the situation we currently have in Slovenia, where we we expected to get this permit awarded last week. Uh, we now understand that there's going to be a further delay and if the company doesn't have the ability to continue independently and fund itself, it may makes us vulnerable to delaying tactics and to, uh, we don't necessarily have the firepower to follow through on some of the things we've said we will do if we don't get uh, progress. No, no, it makes absolute sense. So um, let's uh, drill down on the processing plant permit and the permit to stimulate the wells. Where are you? on those two permits? So those two permits, um, first of all, the, the IPPC permit, the one for the processing plant, that's the one we expected to drop last week based on everything we've been told for a number of months. Um, so when I came into the office on Monday and found out that there'd been a press release or a, a newspaper story over the weekend and a tweet by the Environment Minister that he was going to have an internal review into the permitting process was um, a bit of a shock to uh, understate it. To say the least. So yeah. this is the first time that you heard there was going to be an internal review? Yes, and I think that's what's upset me most about this. I mean, I, I'm upset about the delay, but I think if we'd been contacted by the Environment Minister, he'd said, look, I'm, I'm only in the job a short time. This is quite a big thing. I'd like to take time to read it, understand the process, and just to, to make sure I know what's, what's being signed off. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been perfectly reasonable, um, but I've been upset the way it's been communicated, and I hope that's something we can address whenever um, we're able to meet with him. So you weren't clear last week what the scope of the review might be. Are you any clearer uh, today? No, we're still no clearer. Um, we put out an announcement this morning just to update shareholders that really we had no new information on what this review is going to entail. So I'm hopeful that... Uh, once we get to speak to the Minister, uh, we'll be able to understand what's involved. Might it be useful to understand what his politics are? Uh, what, kind of, what kind of environment minister is he? Is he to the left, to the right? Is he, is he self-interested? What kind of guy is he? Well, I, How can, can we read the tea leaves on this? Well, I, I was very impressed when he came into the job because one of his first actions was to sit down with the Environment Agency and all the companies that have been involved in the permitting process and try and look at 
why the process doesn't work efficiently and what are the obstacles and how do we make it work better, protect the environment, but also work for companies that want to invest in Slovenia and make money. Um, so that was, I was very impressed with them coming in and I thought this is really good, it's very proactive and I was really hopeful. So that's another reason why it was such a shock on Monday to see that the, this internal review had been called. So I'm, I'm, I'm still optimistic that he's, this is all done for the right reasons. He just wants to understand that everything has been done properly and we can get through this. How long might an internal review uh, take, do you think? Six months? It, it's, impossible to it, tell? It's really impossible to tell at the moment. Um, I always hope that it'll be shorter. Okay. Are ARSO, the Slovenian Environment Agency, simply waiting for orders from their new political masters, do you think? Yes. I mean, the Environment Agency sits underneath the Environment Minister, so they're unable to do anything now until this internal review takes place. So having been in a position where you thought ARSO, and, and in fact, you know, the British Embassy have told you that ARSO are going to uh, give you a permit for your plant, and then suddenly, not. Yeah, and I do feel sorry for their position in this as well because they have been doing their job and they're getting quite a lot of emails and uh, phone calls from concerned assent shareholders and I understand completely um, why people would want to get in contact with them but that, first of all, they're sort of stuck in the middle of this so they have done their job, um, they're now stuck with this internal review and obviously it's they're, not really... They're paid employees of the government ultimately. Yeah, they're doing their job and it's not really appropriate to receive email and some of them uh, so what would you say to your shareholders? Well, uh, Ca canny as they say in Scotland. <laughs> I'm not sure of the Scottish... But it, <coughs> we've said Go it in the honest yeah. today and we've said it Tread several carefully. times that it, it would be very helpful if people could cease contacting the Environment Agency, the Minister, the Ministry, any officials in Slovenia, the, the British Embassy, everyone, if they could just let us try and meet resolve things there because venting frustration is not going to make things better no and it's been it's unfortunate that it's being picked up in the Slovenian media uh, there were tweets that were sent by people claiming to be sent shareholders and they'd be published in the Slovenian newspaper and it it just damages um, our position and strengthens the position of those who would seek to halt the project okay I'm not a conspiracy theorist in the slightest but is there a possibility that the government are angling in some way for a Slovenian company to run uh, the, the, the gas field? I don't believe that's the case. I mean, we've been in the country for 11 years, um, invested 50 million euros. We are solely focused on Slovenia, so to all intents and purposes, we are a Slovenian company. We're working on the project with two uh, Slovenian partners. Um, so I, I don't believe that's the case. Um, there are a lot of vested interests uh, operating in Slovenia, though. You know, the Russians, for one, because, you know, if you start uh, delivering uh, gas to Slovenia, then the Russians' noses are going to be put out of joint. The Croatians' noses are going to be put out of joint because they're getting untreated gas from you at a pretty reasonable price, I would imagine. So there's lots of, of different interests. There are a lot of interests, but we've put forward, and again we commented in the RNS today, that what we're doing is to the benefit of Slovenia as much as it's to the benefit of Ascent shareholders. We're going to uh, provide employment, provide investment. Um, we are going to provide tax, there's going to be tax revenues generated in the back of this. We're going to give them a degree of energy independence, which presently everything's imported, but if you look at all their neighbours, they're getting 10-20% of their gas supply from their own production. Um, and it actually helps the economy, it helps the environment because presently Slovenia generates a lot of electricity from burning coal. Gas would be a much cleaner alternative. So well, I, I, I appreciated your RNS making yeah. all those points this morning. So I just want it, yeah. it, it makes absolute sense. Sorry. Yeah. So I mean that that RNS was speaking to assent shareholders and also speaking to the Slovenian public because these things get picked up in the Slovenian newspapers. It made a lot of sense to me. What do I know? Okay, um, the pre uh, previous RNS was talking about taking Slovenia to the European Court. Um, would that is that a, is that a stick uh, to beat the Slovenian government with? Because it's it's going to shine a light on the fact that they're on the one hand uh, appealing for foreign investment, and then when the foreign investment actually turns up, uh, they're not actually so so pro foreigner after all. I mean, they've they've treated you fairly shabbily. They've treated other companies. So you say fairly shabbily, and that's a bit of a surprise given that they're supposed to be pro-investment, pro-foreign investment. Pro yes, investment. Uh, I think that the 
comment about the EU court is it would be our last resort. We, we, nobody wants to go to court. We'd like to resolve no. everything amicably. Um, but I think if we did feel that they weren't treating foreign capital in the same way that domestic capital is treated, then we would need to pursue all options. But I'm, that's the last resort. Um, I believe that we've invested a lot in the country. We've got a great asset in Slovenia. We've got good partners in Slovenia. And we have come through the permitting process. We've been going through it for a long, long time. I'd hope we were near the end, and I hope that once we sit down with those responsible for the process, we can get through this latest... You've uh, spent 50 million question. euros in Slovenia for a start, so your commitment to the country is clear. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot invested. We've got two wells producing at the minute. Uh, the potential from the project is huge. Um, if we can get some support and get the permits we need to develop sure, it. The business case remains as strong as ever, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, the gas is still in the ground. We've been producing from the two wells. Uh, Everything is there. Nothing much has changed. Okay. Strategic review. What is the what is the latest update on the strategic review? Where have you got with it? The strategic review, it's obviously been going on a lot longer than anyone expected it to when we, we kicked it off in April. Uh, we're continuing to talk to people. Uh, I think obviously the lack of a permit has impeded the review as some parties wouldn't invest without a permit. Um, other parties who might be interested without a permit aren't under as much pressure to sort of show their hand because there's not as many people competing with them. Um, so I'd hope the permit might have been a catalyst uh, to move the review forward. I think that's part of the reason for calling this general meeting and asking shareholders just to give us the ability to continue independently should that uh, be needed as it, it, it does help remove any uh, view that some people might have that just hang on and, and wait and you might get it at a distressed price. Um, is that, is that a possibility? N not if we can get the votes through and have the ability to turn around to people and say, look, thanks, but no thanks, we'll continue as an uh, so independent company. It's very clear from you, if, 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 if you actually get funding, then you're never going to be sold as a distressed business because you can hang on for quite some time. Well, I think even having the ability to say to people, look, we haven't raised the money, but we have the ability to raise money, and that means we're not going to take a silly offer. Shareholders have been asking quite a, quite a good question, which is, how much is the, the business worth uh, without those permits? Uh, that is a... I'm not asking for an a interesting number, question. But, but I think without the permits, it's, it's very difficult to value the business. We've, we've got yeah. a lot of gas in the ground. Uh, we're getting some production from the existing wells. There are things that you could do without permits that would continue to give you cash flow. Um, but having permits is really the key to unlocking the uh, big prize, which is all the gas that's in the ground. Okay. Okay. Put your, put your overview hat on. Uh, looking forwards, 12 months, 24 months, what are the significant sort of news flow moments that you think will happen? What are you, are you hoping will happen uh, that will you know, sort out the share price and, and bring, put a smile back in your face? <laughs> Well, it, it's a simple one. It's, it's permits. It's, it's getting a permit to build a processing plant, getting the permits to re-enter PG10, PG11A, and then beginning these the next phase of the development. Because we'd achieved a lot, I think, during 2017. Uh, we got the gas sales agreement with Ena signed. We'd raised the funding, done the work over to the two wells, rehabilitated the plant, got it recertified in the Croatian side of the border. All those things. We got first gas around this time last year. And since then, we've had, we had some operational problems with PG11A, which haven't helped anyone. And then we've had this permitting delay, which has really been the thing, in my opinion, which has dragged the share price down. So I think if we get the permits, when we get the permits, um, then it unlocks the rest of the development. Okay, Colin, thank you very much uh, for sharing all that with us today. Uh, uh, 20th of November is your, your big day, yes? So when, when do you need shareholders to, to vote by? So I think the cut-off date is normally 48 hours before the meeting, so I think it's the Friday. Shareholders can check their forms. I think it's the 16th is the date for the last submission. They can obviously submit their proxies now. They should have their forms, or they can contact their broker to get uh, the ability to vote. And I would strongly urge all shareholders to support uh, the resolutions as I think it's incredibly important for the future of the It's company. pretty fundamental for the future of Ascent, yes? Yes, I think it is. Um, it, to protect what we've achieved so far and allow us to uh, continue and uh, develop what we have. Colin, thanks a lot. Thank you.
Uh, that's it for now. Thanks to Colin for joining us. And if you found this interview useful and you'd like to see others like it, please subscribe on YouTube. Thank you.